This is how I clone my hard drives the easy way, plus advantages of clones over backups. I know there are other ways and software to do this, but this is the way I really like and it works fast. Hello folks. Well first of all, I know some of you are going to tell me how and where I should do my backup files online. But consider this. It's really easy to save files, documents, music and pictures on external USB drives today. I prefer doing that to sending them off into space or in some backup site. Well second is all the programs. You know there are other ways to back up complete operating systems including within Windows. But programs like my CorelDRAW, Aerofly Simulators, Movie Edit Pro, Conversion Programs, Microsoft Office, Photoshop and many others aren't being backed up. To do that you have to pay the site in most cases and it takes many days to back up something like a big 2 terabyte drive. Also, many folks save hundreds of passwords on their computer and allow Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome and others to automatically save them. But if your hard drive fails, you're going to need those passwords to get onto the site to retrieve that backup information. You know, not everyone writes them down on paper. Also consider this, if your hard drive fails, how are you going to go online without the computer? Buying a new computer or hard drive is the option. But an operating system needs to be installed first if you just buy a hard drive. And if you've downloaded the programs online and don't have the installation disk, that can also be a problem. So for me, having a spare cloned hard drive on hand to pop in and keep going is the most logical and why I prefer doing it this way. And you might too. Well some of you may know that I've been involved with computers most of my life. So this bit of computer history should give you a little bit of an idea of my computer experience. You see, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was in the avionics division, and one of my jobs was to maintain the RF-4B Phantoms inertial navigation computers. They were made by Litton and were connected to the gyro platform as you see here. They were pretty complicated and they actually failed a lot, especially with any hard carrier landings. Well, when I got off of active duty in the Marines, I went to work for Hughes Aircraft Interconnecting Devices Division in Irvine, California, and then later was offered a job at Burroughs Corporation, which is now called Unisys. That was after Spirit Univac was purchased by Burroughs. Old man Burroughs invented the adding machine, as you see here. Well, while I was there, I was a hardware support engineer and worked for the TIO Division. That's Technical Information Organization. Well, these computers were very large systems with not very fast speeds compared to what we have today. The power supplies were as big as a minivan and were quite complicated. Hard drives and disk management systems were very difficult and hard disk crashes were common. Backups and programs were done on tape drives, equally massive, plus the machines were cooled with under the floor liquid in pipes. I worked for a couple of years there and so did my wife. She was working on wired backplanes and troubleshooting circuit boards and then later went on to manage the Micro A desktop computers which was one of Unisys first and they were used in many post offices. Well I was offered a job in the Kraft Signature Series line at Kraft RC Systems in 1979 by Phil Kraft himself after he saw an article I wrote in Model Aviation on how to make simple half rates for transmitters. At that point, I still hadn't given up on computers. I worked at Kraft until they went out of business, and after that I started my own repair shop called IRCS, the International Radio Control Service Center. I fixed all kinds of RC equipment. This was very high pressure because the modelers depended on my repairs to work, mostly were servo gears and broken crystals back then. Well anyway, back to computers, you know, and uh, this was in 1977 when I was working at Unisys and Burroughs and Windows 95 didn't even come out until 1995. That was one of the first programs that actually animations could be played on the computer. It was a dancing baby. <laughs> Before that, in the 1990s, we had Windows 3.0, 3.1, and Windows for Workgroups. You know, I built my first PC after owning several computers like the Macintosh with the first mouse and the Atari, the Vic machines, and even my first laptop, the Zenith, which still works. 
Well, back in 2000, after I gained a lot of experience, I started my computer repair business called Dave's Computer Repair. <laughs> what else? I built many computers for folks and was always fixing things that weren't so reliable back then. In all cases, even up to day, I've upgraded all my computers from every Windows operating system and earned my MSSE from Microsoft as well. All my computers are running Windows 10. Well, I have a new video in the works about Aeroflice FS2 full-scale stimulator, but I wanted to back up and put in a bigger hard drive than my gaming computer has now, and that's why I decided to make this video. So this is how I make clones for my hard drives. You see, many folks believe in backups, and do so, and do not realize that the only thing they're backing up are their files, pictures, and documents in most cases. If a hard drive fails and you try to back up your stuff with a new one, you're going to be in for a big surprise because the backups do not back up the programs. Well, this means if you downloaded a program online, or got the key to unlock it, that's going to have to be done again. Also, if you don't have the disk for programs you've installed, that's also going to have to be done again. Then there are the drivers and updates of all those old programs you reinstall all has to be done again. This is all very time consuming, so I learned a long time ago that it's way better to back up your hard drive every six months or more with a clone. That way if the drive crashes, you can always pop in the older hard drive and it contains everything including programs up until you cloned it last. Okay, here's something you might like to know too. If your hard drive has partitions and you want to install a bigger, newer hard drive, you can easily resize and merge the partitions within five minutes with the Easy US Partition Program. There are others, but I found this one works really great. Case in point, I cloned the original hard drive of 350 gig to a one terabyte drive. The problem was the new hard drive only showed 298 gig and the other 750 was in a partition that couldn't be accessed. So by using the partition software, I could easily expand the 350 gig boot and data partition into the unused one and make it all one. Well, that way I have the full size of the new hard drive, and I next just simply used the Seagate disk wizard to clone the hard drive. It took less than a half hour, and this is how I did it. You know, you might note that uh, you'll need two ports and even a USB port with an adapter for attaching a second hard drive will work. It's very easy as you can see and the second newer hard drive starts right up without a problem. Now you have a real backup. So let's hope this helps those that asked me about it and let's show you how this works. Okay, here we go. First you want to download the Seagate program if you're using a Seagate drive. Shut off your computer and connect your new hard drive via the many adapters that are available. You know, I like Seagate. They're reliable and expensive, and I've used them for years. Well, this program will clone any brand of hard drive as long as one of them is at least a Seagate. Most motherboards have a second hard drive port that can be used, as I show in the following example. But if not, you can use the DVD CD port temporarily. There are adapters that will change IDE to SATA 2 and even allow the complete cloning of the drives via a USB port. It's all easy and fast these days compared to the old way, especially when using the free Seagate Disk Wizard program. First I'm going to run PCmatic. This is uh, award winning stuff here, made in USA actually. And I'm going to do a scan and make sure everything is all uh, taken care of before uh, I make the copy. Schematic checks everything, graphics cards, junk files, craplets, make sure everything works. And it's done. I'm going to change the hard drive out right now. This is a one terabyte Seagate hard drive. I have a one terabyte in there. 
and this is one terabyte this time it should copy across I added some more RAM I had 5 gig of RAM I changed the two here this was easy enough to do that's your uh, dim uh, these are each 2 gig and uh, in order to put those in I had to take out my uh, video card here which is a NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti so I'm going to go ahead and plug these wires into the hard drive now we're going to go ahead and run Seagate's disk wizard and we're going to change that out that should copy everything on this hard drive to this one and it makes for a good backup so let's uh, let's get started shut this down well this is a SATA drive and these are these small connectors now you see I could connect up the original hard drive right here but uh, we're not using that we use SATA and uh, now both hard drives are connected I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and that way I will get uh, it's gonna find that other hard drive we'll turn it on right now and it'll find that other hard drive then I can run the program and we'll just clone it real easy okay there's the disk wizard right there go ahead and run this program Alright, clone a disk. It's initializing. Automatic. Next. And we have a select the source disk from the list below. This is disk one. Here, restart is needed. Restart. And it's now cloning the drive. Okay, that's it. Computer shut down. Let's go ahead and uh, it took less than a half hour to do the whole thing. Let's go ahead and uh, plug the hard drive in and see if it works. Okay, I'm going to unplug the wires here on this hard drive, the stock hard drive, the one that's in there. Unplug those wire and I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this in. here and get some power okay all right let's turn it on and see what happens we're gonna see if we get a computer here it's turning on. Starting Windows, that's a good sign. And there we go. My gaming computer is cloned again. And there we go, folks. All is good. That was easy. Okay, there you go. 
I know there are many ways to cut a pizza and other ways and software to do this, but this is just my way and it's always worked for me. I like things to work, you know, so if you can glean a little useful information out of this video, then I'm glad. Like I said before, when I decided to download Aerofly FS2, I needed to do this. So thanks again for watching and please stay tuned for the Aerofly FS2 video where I actually fly all over Southern California where you're not allowed to fly a real plane. Links to the software I used are in the description box and again thanks kindly for watching. See you next time.